today's project is this little box. I'm calling it the push the button box. What does it do? Well, you can program it to do pretty much anything, but as you saw in the opening of this video, I have it programmed to work kind of like a pause button for music playing on my phone. It's basically a simple button mounted to an aluminum panel with a microcontroller and a switch inside a 3D printed enclosure box. But this project is special in a couple of ways. First, this project is a collab with my awesome friend Liz over at Blitz City DIY. Liz wrote the code for this project and she'll be doing a video about it too. So head over to her channel to learn about the programming and the electronics portion of this project. I'll be showing you how I made the aluminum panel for the top and how I 3D modeled and printed the enclosure box. This project is also special because I made the top panel with a new tool in my studio, the Bantam Desktop CNC Mill. If you're following me on social media, you may already know I'm a remote resident artist for Bantam Tools, and they sent me this machine and their PCB mill to use in my projects. So I'll be doing a lot more with these two machines. Thanks, Bantam. The desktop CNC mill is purpose-built for milling small parts out of aluminum, and in this video, I'll show you how I used it to engrave a hand-drawn design into an aluminum box lid. I've already done several projects on these machines, but I'm pretty new to programming CAM for the mill. So for this project, I used a much easier workflow, 2.5D milling. 2.5D milling allows me to send a 2D SVG file to the machine without having to generate G code in a 3D program like Fusion 360. The SVG workflow has been really great for helping me to get started with milling because it kind of leverages my background in graphic design and it allows me to be really free with how I create designs for milling since there are lots of different ways to create 2D vector graphics. Here's how I did it for this project. This project started as a way for me to try out the 2.5D workflow on the Bantam CNC mill. So I began with one of these blank aluminum project box lids and decided I would embellish it with an engraved design. I wanted to go for a hand-drawn look and I was really inspired by the modular synth designs of Winterbloom. I'll link to them below. I started designing by scanning the blank aluminum panel and opening up the image in Adobe Illustrator for iPad. I measured the button I wanted to use and made a circle for the mill to cut out as a mounting hole. Then I just doodled the design around the hole. My plan was to engrave the design with a metal engraver bit, so I didn't need to worry too much about the line width here. I was just going for a design that would be legible and graphic. I also didn't know what I wanted to make the button do yet, so I left it pretty vague. Adobe Illustrator for iPad syncs your files seamlessly to the desktop version of Illustrator, so once I had a hand-drawn design that I liked, I moved over to my laptop to finish up the file. I needed to tell the machine what to cut and what to engrave in my design, and Bantam makes it pretty easy to do this with their advanced SVG workflow. You can use colors in your vector art program to assign different types of operations to parts of your design. So I colored the mounting hole red to mark it as a cutout, and the rest of the design I colored blue to mark it as engrave. Now when I open up the file in the Bantam software and select advanced SVG, the software automatically knows what to cut and what to engrave. I used double-sided Nitto tape to fix the panel in place in the machine for milling, 
and inserted the metal engraving tool into the spindle of the machine. The Bantam software has an internal tool library that it uses to manage the speeds and feeds for the SVG workflow, and I didn't need to change anything there for this small project. I started the mill and the machine engraved my hand-drawn pattern into the panel. After the engraving pass, I changed the tool to a quarter inch flat end mill and cut the mounting hole. And here's what it looks like right out of the machine. I love the clarity of the lines, and it's so cool to see my handwriting and drawing engraved into metal like this. I have a ton of ideas for going further with this technique. I love the look of the aluminum, but I wanted the design to pop more. So after cleaning off the dust and chips, I brushed black acrylic paint into all the engraved grooves. I pushed the paint deep into the grooves and then quickly wiped it off the surface. And this really brought out the design nicely. I made two of these panels and sent one off to my friend Liz over at Blitz City DIY. Head over to Liz's channel to learn about the electronics and coding portion of this project, and definitely subscribe to her so you don't miss any of her awesome projects. To make the 3D printed box, I went back to my scan of the metal faceplate to locate the position of the holes and the outer perimeter. In Fusion 360, I used the scan to model the box so that it would match the perimeter and screw holes in the faceplate exactly. That got me to the basic shape of the box, but I wanted to place all the electronics inside so that I could make holes and standoffs in all the right places. To do this, I used a fantastic resource, the Adafruit CAD Files repository on GitHub. This is where Adafruit shares 3D models of tons of their most used products, and you can drop the models right into Fusion 360 for accurate size and placement of parts. I grabbed the feather microcontroller board and the slide switch and dropped them into place in my fusion file. This helped me figure out where to place everything and create mounting points for holes for the switch and the USB cable. It still took me a few tries to get the switch area just right, and for that I did some quick iteration by 3D printing just the switch area of the box so I could test and redesign several times without having to print the entire box each time. 
Once the box design was ready, I printed it out in this translucent blue filament. I soldered the electronics together and placed everything into the box, adding a small LiPo battery that is held in place with a little double-sided foam tape. The feather board is located at the edge of the box so that you can easily plug in a USB cable to charge the battery or reprogram the board. After mounting the button into the faceplate, I bent the legs of the button out to the side so they wouldn't jam into the feather when everything was assembled. To attach the faceplate, I used M2.5 screws and they just self-thread into the mounting holes I made in the box. Now that it's all put together, I can connect the box to my phone using Adafruit's Blue Fruit Connect app on my iPhone. Once connected, pressing the button will pause or resume any music that's playing on my phone. Again, Liz will be sharing the code that makes all this work over on her channel, so definitely head over there and check it out. This was a fun project that started out as an experiment and I kind of just worked backwards to turn it into something actually functional. And it was really fun to work that way. Thanks so much to Liz for collaborating with me on this. And thanks to Bantam Tools for taking me on as a remote resident artist. By the way, they don't pay me to make videos like this or to do any posting about their machines. They just sent me the machines and said, make something cool with them. And that is really amazing. So thanks again to Bantam Tools. And I've got more projects coming up with both of these machines. So make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram so you don't miss them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.